we are so ready to go here. I'm sharing. Can you all see the committee report? Yeah, we can see the committee report. OK, all right. Okay, let me get my stuff set up here. Looks like we're live on Waycross already, Paula. Okay, sounds good. Okay, let me share the report. Um, and then I'm going to share this to make sure everyone can see it again. And then I'm going to turn things over to um, retired Judge Allen, who is the chair of our HR committee, to kick off our meeting. So, Judge Allen, on to you. All right. Greetings, everyone. Uh, this is the June 3rd, 2022 Human Resources Committee. And I'm very fortunate to have with me our resource officer, Kyle Harden. Hi everyone. She does a lot, most of the heavy lifting, and also uh, my coach, uh, co members, committee members, are Christopher Hardy and Diane Cunningham Redding are with us too. So I'm going to discuss the policy updates. A goal for 22 is to review and revise outdated policies in an effort to ensure that they're clear, concise, and reflect the current practices of the library. We request approval of the attached policy updates and changes. The revised policies are attached as follows. Reasonable accommodations policy is a proposed policy A, and the current policy is exhibit B. The paid time off policy, uh, both attachments are, are the policy proposal and the current policy are both attached. Flexible work arrangement policy. The current and uh, proposed policies are attached also. First of all, is the reasonable accommodations policy. We are recommending changes to the reasonable accommodations policy that will align the policy with our current practices and have included updated language that reflects our organizational culture. Paid time off policy. To align our paid off, uh, paid time off policy with our parental leave policy, we are recommending the addition of parental leave to be considered hours worked. Number one in the general provision section in the PTO policy. This change will allow staff to accrue PTO while using the parental leave benefit. I just have to comment that that is so thoughtful, considerate of our employees. It's so, it's so, it's so caring and, and that's why we have a great library because we have dedicated loyal people who are, are taken care of and that, that just reflects everything the library is about. Hey, uh, to, and I just mentioned that one. So the flexible work arrangement policy is another uh, thoughtful policy for our, for our employees. In an effort to communicate expectations for staff who have approved days of remote work as part of the flexible work arrangement FWA agreement, we are recommending in addition to clarify expectations during inclement weather and other days of unexpected library closing. Staff with an FWA have the ability to perform essential functions of their position in a remote capacity and would be expected to work during circumstances of unexpected library closing. So there's informational items only at this time. I would like to move. Uh, do I need to move for this to be voted? Not, I'll move that we recommend it to the. To the uh, yeah, you trust. can write. You can um, recommend that we move forward sending those to the full board, but we don't need to do a motion in the committee meeting um, right. or accept it. And I, um, Chairman Allen, I don't um, know, or Judge Allen, I don't know if you want Kyla to give any additional um, yes, specifics actually, I around these. I would, I would like, I think these are some uh, very, there's some little subtle changes in here that probably need to be explored. And one sure. of them is that. If you're an FWA person mm -hmm. and the library is closed and you're already, you know, a, a home person, you be working. So explain right. that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we don't have um, a large portion of our staff who have an FWA yeah. um, because most of our staff need to be here on site performing public service as the essential part of their job. But we do have a small portion of staff who do have remote work uh, approved as a part of their flexible work arrangement. They can perform 
the, the major functions of their job in a remote capacity. What's an example of that? Just sure. Other. So um, uh, technology, right? Oh, okay. So um, our web developers, mm -hmm. they can um, do the work that they do from a remote setting. They're probably better off. Here. They're probably better off. So than having people pop in like me and sit down. <laughs> Some of your Easter chocolate. They do get, you know, that that is one thing that we've heard that they do get quite a bit done in okay. that in that remote work. So that's an example of a position that that, makes sense. that has remote work as a part of their. Kyle, well, I think an, another one too. I think that's a great example. And then another one that I think is, I think it may be just about the only service area oh, where people can work from home, which is our virtual information center. And Kyle, I don't know if you want to talk about that one because ah. they they were troopers about it already this past year. And that's been vital to us and I'm continuing oh, our service uh, in times that the library has needed to, to close. Uh, so our, our virtual information center, they have been uh, given um, or loaned laptops to use at home. They can use, uh, take calls through their remote devices, through their laptops. Um, so customers have the ability to reach out to us and to connect with us for information even when we are not um, here outside or have had to close for inclement weather or, um, you know, in the case of a pandemic for, for that short period of time that we have to be closed. And I, I remember uh, that I think you made, uh, Paula made a reference to that crew who were essential because they also were helping employees figure out, you know, what, is, what status am, am I and, and how do I make this work? And I have it today, I'm off, you know, I can't come in. And they, they, and they dealt with all of those issues. Absolutely. So it's been a benefit to you know those staff. They have that ability to work remote for a portion of their work week, um, but also to our library customers because if we do have to close for a right. snow emergency, we do have uh, at least some continuation of service uh, that we can provide for. We never patients. shut down completely. Absolutely. We have had our goal. All right. Very good. So here's some information items only. Uh, the main library subsidy. Due to the additional costs that staff may uh, incur from working at the main library, we are investigating the possibility of a main library subsidy. We are currently in conversation with other downtown organizations to benchmark best practices and to assess what may be feasible for our organization. We plan to have more information to share at the upcoming August board meeting. Summer Youth Employment Program. This summer, the library is partnering with uh, one of my favorite organizations, the Chabra House, to participate in the Summer Youth Employment Program. The goal of this program is to provide opportunities for youth to gain valuable work skills and good learning environments. The library currently has plans to have youth working at the Grosbeck and Price Hill branches through this program. Benefits waiting period for new staff. As part of our work around investing in staff, we're investigating the possibility of amending our contracts with medical, dental, life, and volunteer, voluntary carriers so that eligible staff will be able to enroll in benefits on the first of the month after 30 days of hire. This potential change would shorten the waiting period for staff as they currently must wait until the first of the month after 60 days of hire to become benefits eligible. We plan to continue to work with our carriers to understand if this policy change is feasible and we'll share more information about this potential change at the August board meeting. Another cue this just warms my heart to thinking about employees in the public. Um, exhibit A is, is, I'm not going to read Exhibit A, uh, but it describes what the purpose of Exhibit A and Exhibit B and Exhibit C are. There's a, a lot of detail in here. For example, you want to talk about the proposed paid time off to shift to that sure, and uh, absolutely. people can earn quite a bit from um, time off policy. Absolutely, yeah. So the the only change that we made to this policy that we did need to um, run it uh, by the board was that we are including parental leave under the general provisions of hours worked. So um, in this current policy that we have, um, you can accrue PTO while you're on PTO, while you are on a holiday, while you are taking sick leave, but parental leave was not included. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't. So okay. we noticed that, oh. and uh, we need to make sure that that's included because that's a new leave. So we didn't realize that it also impacted this policy that we needed to include it but so yes. that people can 
and yeah. CCL. Because the babies need their parents to get everything that they need to That's be great. for their parents. And we're going to go back and um, and allot PTO to those folks who maybe did not accrue oh, during great. that time of parental leave. Very good, very good. So I've, I've covered those policies there, A, B, C, D, and E, and F. And that seems to be all there is to this report. Is there anything else? Um, okay. Any Judge more comments from uh, committee members? Judge Allen, this is Paula, but, um, and the committee maybe, maybe the committee members might be asking. I just want to briefly touch on the main library subsidy. Um, you know, we're investigating what the options are, and there were a number of um, IRS rules and other rules around this kind of a subsidy. I will say that our, our primary thinking is that uh, people who work at main library have to pay for parking, um, and uh, that parking cost, we believe, has... Um, oh gotten higher in the last couple of years so we're not sure that it would be a full coverage of that or anything of that nature we're trying to look at what we can do within um our realistic budget constraints because we have a lot of folks that work here but we do want to recognize that we may need to look at some percentage of uh, their ability to do the basic thing like parking or transportation here. So just to give folks an idea of where that focus is, and we will give you more information, but we are trying to investigate the options of what we can do there. That's a great, great, great uh, plan right there because uh, it shouldn't be a punishment to work in a main library by having to dig into your pocket to pay these exorbitant parking costs. Yes, very annoying. So we'll keep you posted. Thank you for being considerate about that. Yeah, I don't think it should be a burden. Okay. Right. Yeah, and we are we are trying to look at what um, I did a little conversation with some other urban library uh, directors, and uh, it does look there's generally the approach is some percentage or some uh, dollar amount that helps to offset it, um, and that has been something that I think a lot of mid-sized cities like ours, people didn't necessarily consider it something that was quite as uh, important as it is now, but so many mid-sized cities have seen a real revitalization of their downtown. So right. along with that, I think a lot of them have seen increased parking costs. And Kyle and I were talking about that. So, you know, we're just trying to alert you to what we're thinking. And again, the rules on trying to make it uh, something we can do in the most straightforward way are kind of difficult. The IRS has some very specific rules about what you can and can't do. So we continue to investigate that. And Kyla and Molly, our fiscal officer, have um, been reviewing IRS code and other things to try to determine the best path forward. So we'll keep you posted. Our plan is to hopefully figure something out here in 2022 so that we would be able to um, implement that in 2023. We've been talking about parking since I've been on the board, mm -hmm. and that was at, at the time. That was before Court Street parking was basically yeah. taken away because of the marvelous development there. And what used to be parking uh, down, down the riverfront, that's not available. And then uh, the casino used to provide it. So it's just all of it's been chipped away. And so it's a real yeah. problem. And we're leading the way because I don't think the courthouse is a way into this kind of thought because they we don't have the well they don't have the budget for that. It is, it's a tricky thing um but we do need to investigate it so i appreciate the support to look into that and the realization of you know to, i think it's it, we're not we would like people to work at our main library and uh do what we can to support that in an um in an equitable manner to the other experiences of our workers throughout the county as much as we can Thank you, Judge Allen. That was all I wanted to just clarify. Thank you. So is this meeting adjourned at this time? I think it is. This meeting is adjourned. Thank right. you for your time. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.